Hi everybody, welcome to GT Coding. In this tutorial series, we are designing the Apple navigation menu. So this is our progress as of now. We can see we have designed the menu items. And when we click on the search button, we have the search form displayed over here and also the quick links. And when we click on this close button or somewhere outside the search container, we have the menu items displayed over here once again. And we have also added animations to the menu items and the search form and the quick links. So this is our progress as of now. Now in this video, we will start designing the mobile version of this website. So let's get started. So here I'm in the apple.com website and let's go ahead and see how the responsive versions are designed. So let's right click over here and click on inspect. And you can click on this button called toggle device toolbar. So I'm using the Google Chrome browser and you can click on this button toggle device toolbar. And now you can decrease the width of your screen and uh, we can see this is the mobile version of the Apple website. But we have one more breakpoint. So here we can see we have a fixed width for all these uh, menu items. But if you decrease the screen width, we can see that it has 100% width. And now the space between each of these menu items is uh, calculated based on the screen width. And when we are less than 768 pixels, we have this version right here. So first of all, let's add a breakpoint for this version where we have 100% width for the desktop nav and the spacing between each of these menu items is decided based on the screen width. So let's go to our design and let's go to the inspector. So right now we can see that when we decrease the width of the screen, the last menu item just cuts off and so does the other menu items. So let's add a breakpoint. So we will add it at 1100 pixels. So let's go to the CSS and uh, we'll just add a comment. Now for adding breakpoints to the responsive design, we're gonna use media queries. So let's add a comment. We'll just type media queries. And then you have to type at media. And uh, then here you have to type the screen width. So I'll just type max width and I will set it to 1100 pixels. So now if the width of the screen is less than 1100 pixels, all the code that is in here will be executed. Now if you scroll up and take a look at the CSS for the nav, so if you go to the HTML, we can see that we have this nav container and in that we have the nav. And here in the style.css, we can see that for the nav, we have set a width of 1000 pixels. So now when we are less than 1100 pixels, we have to set the width to 100% of the parent. So let's type nav container nav and we'll set the width to 100%. And we'll also add some padding to the sides. So I'll just type padding zero for top and bottom and for left and right, we will have 32 pixels. Right now let's decrease the width. And now we can see that uh, everything is working all right. So when the width is greater than 1100 pixels, we have a fixed width for the nav, but when we are less than 1100 pixels, we have 100% width for the nav. All right, now the next breakpoint that we need to have is for 768 pixels. So I'll just decrease the size of the screen. Now before writing the media query for the 768 max width, let's add the mobile navigation. So in the Apple website, we can see we have three elements. One is the menu icon, and then we have the logo, and then we have the bag icon. So let's create a new unordered list for the mobile nav. So let's go back to the HTML and here we can see for the desktop nav, we have this UL and we have this class desktop nav. So I'll just create one more UL here about the desktop nav and we'll just give it a class of mobile nav. And in that we need to have three elements. So let's type li and this is the first element which is uh, the menu icon. Now this is not just an image. So when we click on this, we can see that it changes to the close icon. So we have to create this using HTML and CSS. So for that, I'll just create a division over here and I'll just give it a class of menu icon container. And in that we'll create a division with the class of menu icon. And here we will create two spans for the two lines. So let's just type span and we'll give it a class of line one. And I'll just duplicate this and I'll just give it a class of line two. So these are going to be the two lines over here. 
Now, when we click on this button, we're going to change the CSS and make it look like the close button. All right, the next thing we need to add is the logo. So let's create one more list item and uh, we'll just have an anchor tag and we will give it a class of link logo. We had already added the styles for the link logo in the CSS. So here we can see for the link logo, we have the background image as the logo. We had done this in the previous tutorials. So now the next thing we need to add is this bag icon. So let's create one more li and we'll create an anchor tag and we'll just type class link bag. And we have added the CSS for this as well. So here we can see for the link bag, we have this background image bag icon. Now the next thing we will do is we want to hide this mobile nav in the desktop version. So let me just maximize this. Here we can see in the desktop version we have the mobile menu displayed. So let's just hide that in the style.css. So I just add some CSS for that. Here we'll just add a comment hidden items. We had given it a class of mobile nav and let's type display of none. And now we can see that the mobile nav is not being displayed in the desktop version. Now in the mobile version, we want to display the mobile now. But before that, let's style these menu items. So let's go to the Apple website. And if I click on this menu icon, we can see that the menu items are displayed over here. So we have to change the layout of the menu items. Right now it is one next to the other. We have to bring it one below the other. And we also have to add some more styles to make it look like this. So let's do that first. So let's add a media query over here. So I'll just type at media max width of 768 pixels and let's style the desktop now. So all these menu items are from the desktop now. So here we can see we have the desktop now and in that we have all these menu items. So let's go back to the style.css and uh, for the desktop now we have set a display of flex. So if we go to the styles for the desktop now. So here we can see we have set the display as flex. Now we can add a property called flex direction to column so that all the elements will be one below the other. So let's type nav container desktop nav and we will set the flex direction to column. Now let's set the position to fixed. So it will always be in a fixed position when it is active. And let's set the top position to zero and the left position to zero. And we'll also set a width of 100% and a height of 100 viewport height. Let's set the background color as black. Now we had set justify content to space between in the desktop version because we wanted everything to have the correct amount of spacing. But for the mobile version, we don't want to have the space between the mobile version based on the screen height. So let's type justify content and we'll set it to start. So now we can see it has the default spacing. And now we can add our own styles and make it look like this. Now at the beginning, we don't want to display these uh, menu items. This is how it will look at the beginning. And when we click on the menu icon, we want to display the menu items. So by default, we will set the height of uh, the desktop nav to zero viewport height. And we'll also set the overflow to hidden so that anything outside the parent division will not be visible. And if we have an active class to the nav container, then we will display the desktop nav. So let's type nav container dot active and let's type desktop nav. And here we will set the height to 100 viewport height. So let's go back to our HTML and let's add the active class to the nav container. And now we can see that uh, the menu items are being displayed. And when we don't have the active class, it is not being displayed. So we will add and remove these classes using JavaScript. All right, let's continue styling the menu items. So let's go back to our style.css. And now let's style the list items inside uh, the UL. So let's type nav container desktop nav li and right now we don't have a width of 100% for the list items so if we give a background color we can see it doesn't have a width of 100% so let's type width of 100% and we'll also give it a padding of 0 for top and bottom and for left and right we will have a padding of 32 pixels and let's remove the background color now we need to have some spacing at the top for the search form so we will add a margin to the first element so let's type nav container desktop nav li colon first child and we will set a margin top of 120 pixels. All right, now the next thing we will do is we will hide the logo, the search icon and the bag icon. 
So here we can see in the Apple website, we don't have the logo, the search icon and the bag icon. It has the logo here at the top, but uh, we are adding it as a different element. So if you go to the HTML, we can see we have created a different uh, unordered list. And in that we have the menu icon, the logo and the bag icon. So we don't need to have the logo inside the desktop nav. So let's go back to our style.css and uh, let's hide all those elements. So here I'll type nav container desktop nav dot link logo. So here in the HTML we can see we have this desktop nav and in that we have this anchor tag with a class of link logo. So we'll do that with the link search and also the link bag. So let's go over here and let's add a comma and I'll just type nav container desktop nav and uh, link search and we also want to have nav container desktop nav link bag right now for each of these elements i'll just type display of none right now we just have these elements now let's style all of these so we'll target the anchor tags so here i'll just type nav container desktop nav lia and uh, let's set a padding of 16 pixels top and bottom and zero for left and right and the padding is not being applied because these are anchor tags and by default they are display of inline so we have to change it to display of inline block let's also add a border bottom so let's type border bottom and uh, we will type one pixel solid 616161 and we'll also change the width to 100 percent right now let's increase the font size a little bit so i'll just type font size of 17 pixels all right, that's it with the anchor tags. Now let's go ahead and style the mobile nav. So we have created this UL with the class of mobile nav. So let's create a comment over here, mobile nav. And we just target it by typing nav, mobile nav. And we'll set the display to flex. Now the mobile nav is not being displayed. So let's go to uh, this desktop nav. So here we can see we have added some styles for the desktop nav. So here we have to have a negative Z index. So I'll just type Z index and we'll just type negative one. So now we can see that the mobile nav is being displayed. Now let's set the width to 100%. Now let's set the property justify content to space between so that everything will have even amount of spacing. And we'll also remove the bullets. So I'll just type list style and we'll just set it to none. All right, now let's style the menu icon. So if you go back to the HTML here, we can see we have created a division with the class of menu icon container. And in that we have the menu icon division and in that we have two spans with classes line one and line two. So let's style this and uh, we'll make it look like this close button and also this menu icon. So let's go back to our CSS and uh, here we'll just type nav menu icon container and uh, we'll set the width to 20 pixels and the height to 44 pixels and right now we cannot see anything because uh, we haven't styled the lines yet so I'll just give a background color so that we can see what is going on All right, let's set the display to flex and uh, we will align items to the center so that the icon will be in the center vertically and we'll also set the cursor to pointer so that when we hover over this we have the pointer but uh, since we are using the responsive version of Chrome we cannot see the pointer right now. Right now let's set the position of the menu icon to relative because we're going to position the lines relative to the menu icon. So here I'll just type nav menu icon and we'll set the position to relative and we'll also set the width to 100% of the parent. Right now let's position the lines. So just type nav menu icon line one and we'll also target the line two. So I'll just type nav menu icon line two. Right now let's set their position to absolute and let's set the height to one pixel and we'll set the width to 100% and let's set a background color of white. Right now we can see the lines are being displayed over here. Right now both the lines are the same position so we can see just one line. So now let's remove this background color from here. Right now let's style each of these lines separately. So I'll just type nav menu icon line one and we'll set the top position to negative four pixels and uh, let's target the line two so i'll just type nav menu icon line two and we'll set the top position to four pixels 
Right now let's set the style for when the menu is open. Now this is the icon when the menu is closed. Now when we open the menu, we have this icon over here, close icon. So let's add some styles for that. Now when someone clicks on the menu icon, we will set a class called active to the menu icon container. And when we have the active class to the menu icon container, we will add some styles to the lines so that uh, it will look like this. So let's add the active class over here so that we can test it. And uh, here we will type nav menu icon container dot active. And here we will type menu icon line one. And we'll set the top position to zero. And now we need to rotate it. So I'll just type transform rotate Z and we will rotate it 45 degrees. And uh, let's copy this and uh, add some styles for the line two. So here we we'll just change this to line two. And for this, we will rotate it negative 45 degrees. So now we have this close icon over here. Now when we remove the active class from uh, the menu icon container, we have the other icon over here. All right, so that's basically it for this video. In the next video, we will add the search form and maybe also add the animation for the mobile version. So if you have any doubts, you can ask in the comments below. And if you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.